most criminally underrated movies of all time goes up against one of the most overrated ones. It's Tommy Wiseau's masterpiece, The Room, versus some piece of shit flick called Room. They couldn't even get two words in there. Buckle the fuck up, because I'm not holding back. Where's Lisa going? Where's intern Lisa going? She's leaving for the day? Why, Lisa? Why? Why? Oh, hi, Mark. I didn't know you were coming in today. Let's get started with the feud. This is such a fucking joke. It's, it's an insult to compare Room to the master craft work Tommy Wiseau has put into The Room. Visionary artist Tommy Wiseau not only wrote The Room, he directed, produced, and acted in it. Although it's hard to tell where the man ends and the actor begins. The way he seamlessly puts himself all into his character and also all into Lisa's vagina, it's mind altering. His performance as Johnny ranks above most high profile roles like Heath Ledger's Joker and Anthony Hopkins' Hannibal. Room is basically Brie Larson crying for two fucking hours. Wow. What a tough performance for a woman to accomplish. Producing tears on camera. Better give her the Oscar or she'll cry again. What makes The Room such a champagne film is the layers upon layers of character study at play. These are all broken people with real world problems. You gotta tear me apart, Lisa! Take Denny, for example, a down on his luck teen desperately seeking that father figure. He takes refuge in Johnny's good nature. Johnny gets this kid an apartment next door and always welcomes him in with open arms. Well, except for during one of Johnny's many lovemaking sessions. As much as Denny wants to watch, it's just not appropriate. Pillow fighting is perfectly acceptable, but there is a clear fucking line that begins and ends with candlelit thrusting. Speaking of getting savagely violated, Lisa is what I would consider the central character here. Although this is not a traditional film by any sense, so I could be completely wrong. The movie's far too deep for my weak mind to comprehend. Balls deep. Lisa's a bitch and a temptress. She's a woman who gets what she wants and nothing will get in the way of her happiness. She loves Johnny, but his best friend Mark is too delicious to keep off the menu. Mark is the yin to Johnny's yang. He's the bad boy down the street that's too busy to talk to you, but always has time to fuck. He's standoffish, yet clingy. He claims to be Johnny's best friend, but he has no problem stabbing his fiance in the crotch at every turn. Why so wisely introduces the viewer to Lisa's savage, no-nonsense mother who constantly tells her stupid fucking daughter how things are in this world. Men provide for women, who essentially are nothing more than vessels for babies. They just shop and take the man's money. Oh yeah, and Lisa's mom also has breast cancer, but who cares? Not the script, it doesn't have time to as it's never brought up again. It's one of the many red herrings in this Hitchcockian affair. Outside of Brie Larson's baby poor me performance is her character's son Jack, played by some little shit named Jacob Trambley or however you say it. He plays with toys and sometimes listens to his mother. Wow, what a tough role to master as a kid actor. These guys really had it tough. Outside of William H. Macy coming in later in the picture, it's really just these two moping around most of the time. What a rough time, living out your life in a room, being paid for by a guy you barely have to see. He buys you whatever you want and lets you be with your kid. How is this even a movie? It's what every woman wants. Hey, Mark. Is Lisa coming back? No? Ah! You're tearing me apart, Lisa! The room is of love and betrayal, but that's just top surface high school writing bullshit. It's way more. The movie is far smarter than any one person can dissect, unless you are the creator Tommy Wiseau himself. It's a polarizing film about the duality of man and the lengths he will go to to win what is rightfully his. In the first 30 minutes alone, we are treated to not just one softcore sex scene, but three. Two of which use recycled shots in the bedroom. Make no mistake, this is not done by accident. Every frame is a painting in motion. Much like Michael Bay reusing shots from one film to the other, Tommy carefully extracts moments that need reminding. Typically, it's one of Lisa's tits. The sex scenes welcome us into Johnny's playground and keep us engaged with the animalistic acts of pure love. And by the way he ravages her, I'm not entirely convinced he wasn't fully inside her until completion. 
Tommy also wisely sneaks in a BJ scene to knock the audience over the head with the contrasting situations. Where Johnny and Lisa are very much in a passionate embrace, we see his simple-minded friends fornicating on the couch. It's silly and stupid and it's all intentional. Simpletons often criticize this tour de force for having a bunch of football scenes sprinkled throughout, but it's not the film's job to dumb shit down for them. The message couldn't be clear. No matter what these guys are going through in life, there is always a constant for them, and that's tossing the old pigskin around. Mike's banging Lisa. Denny's caught up in some seedy shit with drug dealers. Johnny doesn't have the faintest idea of how to communicate with people, as he is secretly a cyborg. None of this matters when you're playing a little football. It's like each toss of the football is a little bit of that care being washed away. These guys are all bipolar as well, you should know that. One minute having a casual conversation and the next trying to throw each other off rooftops. Which is what I wanted to do myself after sitting through the room. The story is so one note and simple. A woman is kidnapped as a teenager and forced to live, give birth, and raise a kid for many years in a small, isolated room with no contact to the outside world. It sounds worse than it is. They have a TV, and a book, and rat to play with. They aren't living out each day with inner demons like Johnny and his friends, that's for sure. Room's second half is about recovery, or the lack thereof. I suppose some average moviegoer may consider this a remarkable film, full of intense drama and extremely emotional moments. A movie that's hard to even sit through, especially as a father of two, who can't stand to watch kids being treated in such a horrific manner. Sure, the movie is only inspired by true events, but those true events are even worse than the movie's version. To those idiots, I say, see better movies, like The Room. Unless they're too afraid to branch out and try something better. Maybe they're a little bit too chicken? Chip, 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 Where do I even start? The Room is so dense. Every single frame has something going on. From the clever use of spoons in the picture frames, symbolizing Hollywood and its spoon-feeding bullshit, to the amazing use of music, the soft jazz and dated soundtrack that sounds like something out of an old episode of Red Shoe Diaries, makes you go even further down into the psyche of man. Not since 2001 A Space Odyssey have I felt so out of the loop. It's refreshing. It's beautiful. It's the room. Visually, Tommy is doing things no other director would even consider, like shooting the film on digital and traditional stock in tandem. Sure, that doubled the cost of the picture. He goes against all conventions. Most directors use establishing shots to let the audience know the character's location, but Tommy instead opted to place in stock footage of random things like bridges and parks. He pushes the fucking envelope, and when you think he can't go further, he takes the envelope and fucks it out of existence. The soft focus he uses on everything gives the film a sort of soap opera feel. He counters that emotion by putting the camera at angles that don't look pleasing on the eye at all and keep you up close to the action, almost claustrophobic at times. Speaking of claustrophobic, Room feels too personal. I didn't like the close-up shots from the kid's point of view of his depressing homemade toys. I don't want to see this fuckery through the eyes of an innocent child. I want to view it through the lens of a man who doesn't know how to read his own scripts and trashes his own house like some sort of a Frankenstein monster. I can connect to that, I can relate to that, and I'm gonna conclude with that. <laughs> Rome is a shit show and it has no reason to exist. The performances are so impactful that you end up feeling like a terrible person for even watching their struggle. After watching this movie, I spent the better half of a week trying to decide if I wanted to be some sort of a nighttime vigilante, going around the mean streets saving innocent victims from horrible crimes. Then I realized I have no actual fighting skills, I'm not a very courageous person, uh, so I just rewatched The Room and everything was alright again. A gift from the god himself, Tommy Wiseau. He had a vision and he nailed it, and more importantly, he nailed Lisa. He made me happy again. Now I ask you to dig down and tell me which film is truly better. Some torture porn, Oscar bait, dumpster fire, mother son adventure, or one of the most profoundly brilliant and flawless films of the century. Comment, vote, and remember, this is more than just reviews, this is Movie Feuds. Hey Mark! Tell Lisa tomorrow that she can go to the store, pick out anything she wants. Maybe a nice pretty dress again. Anything for my princess.
Oh, hello. If you stuck around this far, you should know that the entire episode was sarcasm. You're smart enough to get that. But in the off chance you are a total buffoon, know this. Room is an amazing movie. It was heart-wrenching. I could hardly watch it, honestly. It was very powerful for me. And I'm sad that, sad and that I'm just getting to this review now. But uh, uh, Brie and Jacob did amazing performances, and I can't think of a movie that uh, really hit me so hard before uh, in the feels department. The Room is, is a silly, stupid, fucking terrible train wreck of a film, and uh, you should all watch it and, and laugh at how bad it is.